Oh my gosh, I have to listen to another natural talk about this 30 day detox or like this no butter, no oil challenge. Seriously. <laughs> I know I'm very late to talking about this topic and honestly it was on purpose because I wanted to really digest all of the information that was out and about in the natural hair community about the topic and really come with a video that makes some sort of a difference or has a different spin. I didn't want to just come and actually do the the 30 day detox because honestly that does not make sense to me. I am not a natural who uses oils, raw oils or butters in my hair at all because I have seborrheic dermatitis. If you are one such person, I have a couple videos that I will link in a little playlist up here you guys could go and check out about my thoughts on oil when you have seborrheic dermatitis, but that is a separate subject. Back to the no oil, no butter challenge. So like I was saying, it doesn't make sense for me to do it because I don't use oils or butters. And so I wanted to provide a different kind of value to you guys. And hopefully you can kind of get an idea as to the science behind and the rationale behind the challenge and why it became so popular, why it was so controversial and hopefully you learn something from this video. So yeah, fun fact, did you know that our hair is actually coated in oil? And no, I'm not referring to sebum, that comes from our scalp and as you know that doesn't travel as efficiently down curly, coily hair as it does with straight hair. What I'm talking about is on each actual individual strand, there is a lipid layer that's also called the 18 methyl eicosanoic acid or 18 MEA that coats each one of the strands. And honestly, that is what gives our hair the hydrophobic quality. Now, hydrophobic basically is just a fancy way to say that our hair tends to repel too much water. Hydro is water, phobic means afraid of. Our hair is afraid of water, basically. So our hair is able to take in the amount of water that it needs and repel any excess water that it does not need. And obviously that is such an important characteristic for our hair because you don't want your hair to fill up completely with water and just become really um, inundated. That could be very damaging to your hair and that is where high girl fatigue and all those other things come into play and those are things you do not want. So yeah, we definitely don't want hydro fatigue to be something that sets in and that is where penetrative oils come in as another function of oils in our hair. Penetrative oils such as coconut oil, avocado oil, they are tiny, they contain tiny molecules that are able to get into our hair shaft and kind of seal in between the cuticles and prevent excess water from getting in. And that is why a lot of people you find do like pre-poos and hot oil treatments and all of those things in order to prevent hydral fatigue. Now, some people also love oils in terms of the, the sealing oils, and that is where you will find that a lot of people do their moisturizing and sealing regimen. And so they'll use thicker oils like Jamaican black castor oil, regular castor oil. Um, some people where well, we've moved away from using mineral oil, but some people even have gone back to using things like grease because it's so thick and it just coats the outside of your hair that it allows one for lubrication of your hair and there's less friction, less breakage of your hair. When you have such a thick coating, butters kind of do the same thing. Um, what else? It also adds shine to the hair. There are a myriad of different reasons that people use oils also for the nutrients as they do their hot oil treatments. A lot of people use them for a number of reasons. So as you could see, oils are not like this terrible thing you should fear unless you're somebody like me and I would just be like, no thank you, sir. Um, but yeah, if you are somebody who can use oils, I do encourage you to continue to use your oils if you so choose but just be very mindful of a few things. So in 2005, a study was done and I will leave the link to the study in the description box, but a study was done between coconut oil, sunflower oil, olive oil, and mineral oil and how they impact the hair strand. And it was found, and I think this would not be a surprise to anybody, that all of the oils beside mineral oil were able to penetrate to the hair to some extent. Mineral oil just left a really thick layer on the outside of the cuticle. The oils that did penetrate though, while they were able to penetrate to some extent, they did leave a thin film on the hair, on the cuticle, and that could tend to build up over time. 
So in 2007, there was also a study that looked at the effect of oil films on moisture vapor on human hair to analyze the capability of oils to reduce the moisture pickup. Now, coming off of the back of me saying that oils do leave back, even penetrative oils do leave back a thin layer or thin film of oil on the, on the hair strand, that's not to say that you can't use your oils if you find that that's what works for you. What I would advise you to do though is to use penetrative oils. You don't want to use like a Jamaican black castor oil that's just going to build up over time and continue building up and reduce your moisture uptake when you, let's say for instance, you wash your hair on Sunday, you apply your leave-in conditioner, whatever other products, stylers that you use and you apply your oil and you seal. Let's say by Wednesday your hair is dry again, you don't want to go back and reapply all of your products and reseal with Jamaican black castor oil. It's just gonna create more buildup. So what would be better, I mean, you could do that if you want, but what would be advised is that you use more of a penetrative oil so that the layer of product and the layer of buildup isn't as thick. Now, obviously, as I alluded to, the buildup is something that over time is going to become an issue because there's going to become a point where you're going to have so much buildup on your hair that your hair is struggling to pick up any moisture. So you might wash your hair again, and because you didn't remove the thick oil and butter that you put on your hair, it just kind of sits there still, especially if you don't use the proper shampoo and the proper cleansing um, products. It can prevent moisture or as much moisture as possible from getting into your hair strand. So yeah, that is where the 30 day detox comes in because obviously after some time you could imagine that with constant reapplication of those products, those oils, those butters, and without a proper cleansing routine, it can build up over time and it could prevent you very well from allowing your hair to accept the moisture that it really, really needs. So enter in the 30 day detox to the group chat. Now, I do understand given the background, I see both sides. There are a lot of people who really, really swear by their oils and they are riding or dying for their oils. And I do understand the, 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 the approach taken by those hairstylists who created the 30 day detox. I do understand, but I feel like they're like really extremes on the spectrum. And I feel like we can meet somewhere in the middle, you know, like you'd have to throw the baby with the bathwater. <laughs> Now, as far as I understand the 30 day detox, you would use a really clarifying shampoo. Like you really, really, really want to strip down your hair. Um, I did do this particular method. Now, like I said, I don't use raw oils or butters in my hair. So I would not have needed like a really deep uh, shampoo session, but I did out of curiosity, try it for one wash day. You guys could see how much my curls are popping with just shampoo on. So I think that's what they mean when they say to make sure your hair is thoroughly cleansed and that there is nothing on it. So that you could see a real curl pattern popping, you know. Use a really stripping shampoo. Um, I used the Afro Love Detox shampoo that particular wash day and really stripped my hair. They said that you should take the shampoo and like really like just work it down the length of your hair and make sure that it's not just about focusing on your scalp. They want you to get it all the way down the length of your hair and do kind of like a smoothing motion. They said that it's supposed to help you relax your cuticles because shampoos do, because of the pH of shampoos, they do raise your cuticles to get the dirt and oil and grime and all of that out. So they recommend that even when you're shampooing your hair, you use a smoothing motion and that should help you to reduce some of the frizz that you would get from using such an intense shampoo treatment. Now I do recall, cause they said to almost leave the shampoo in like you would a conditioner. So you leave it in for maybe like five minutes, then you rinse that out and then you go again with another shampoo session. I didn't do all of that. Cause like I said, I don't use oils and butters like that, but I do recall my hair feeling a little more stripped of course than I'm accustomed to. 
Now, I know a lot of people aren't too keen on using clarifying shampoos, though I would recommend it from time to time. Obviously, it's not something you want to use every week or necessarily every month, depending on the products you use to style your hair, but I do recommend it from time to time. Um, there are other cleansing options that you can use, however. Clay is a pretty good option. It helps to remove oil and buildup from the hair and scalp and has, helps to detoxify it. You can also use Ayurvedic herbs as a cleanser. I have used Rita and Shikai Kai from Hana Trinidad as a shampoo slash conditioning treatment and it left my hair feeling really good. And the one of the misconceptions about shampoos, and I feel like this deserves a whole separate video on its own, so if you guys want me to do a shampoo video and like how that affects our hair then let me know but just really quickly the ayurvedic shampoo left my hair feeling really good and at first you kind of have to get accustomed to the fact that it doesn't so it's like a traditional shampoo would but rest assured that it cleanses your hair just as well nothing about foaming is cleansing to the hair <laughs> so again if you guys want me to do a video on that definitely comment down below and i'll be sure to do that for you guys and last but probably least is co-washing. Now, I don't recommend co-washing, especially if you have seborrheic dermatitis like me. I tried that one time and let me tell you, though, but it's a waste of time, but it's a waste of money, but it's a waste of nothing. It, no, it's a no for me. It's a no for me. And you could use co-washes. I mean, they are somewhat potentially helpful but I would recommend that in like a pinch like you really need to wash your hair and you don't have time to do like a full wash day cool but buy your next wash day find yourself a shampoo now please <laughs> so that is the shampoo portion of the 30 day detox and then going on to the conditioning section now they say to use a regular conditioner conditioner is a conditioner is a conditioner now while I agree to some extent I do think that deep conditioners, or even if you use a regular conditioner as a deep conditioner, I think there is something to be said for leaving a conditioner to sit on your hair that has penetrative properties. That is really big for me. And the fact that that is missing low key from this particular approach kind of has me like, ah. Now, I think I told you guys about the time that I attempted to do this particular type of routine. Um, it didn't have a deep conditioner in it, just a regular rinse out conditioner. And my hair felt okay, but not as great as I know it could feel with a deep conditioner, you know? Now, in addition to just the fact that they're using a regular conditioner, this conditioner should not have oil or butter in the first five ingredients. Now, to me, see no hand or there, because like I said, once you're cleansing properly, you don't really need to nitpick about those little details, at least in my opinion. Now, the third step in the wash day process, and they said that this entire process is supposed to take you an hour. Now, I can vouch for that in terms of the fact that my hair, I feel like it's pretty well trained to do wash and goes and to be easily detangled and I think that is one of the great benefits of this method is that because you are so like you become so comfortable with like just running through your hair with product or conditioner or gel or whatever the case may be it really does cut down your wash time and I, I can't for sure say once you've gotten accustomed to manipulating your hair in that way you really can get wash day under an hour and be done <laughs> then then of course you could go on to drying and that kind of thing but for sure it could it could be done now in terms of styling they want you to style with botanical gels my issue with this two issues one issue is that we completely hopped and stepped and leaped over leaving conditioners i tried that i will never do that again my hair needs a leave-in conditioner like i told you guys i did that for like six weeks I will post a video here. You guys could go and look at it and see what my impression or my thoughts were on that whole regimen. But my hair needs a leave-in conditioner. So that is issue number one for me. Issue number two for me, while I do like gels or I like styling my hair with gels, one, I no longer do wash and goes. So 
I will also put that video up here as to why I stopped doing wash and goes. I no longer do wash and goes, and I also feel like botanical gels, one, are expensive, and two, they don't give my hair as much hole as I need it to get in this Caribbean humidity. And so if you are living somewhere more temperate, it might work out better for you. But for me and my house, we shall not be really dibble and dabbling too much in the botanical gels. And that's not to say I won't use them because I have I actually do only Camille Rose gel. I do have a couple other botanical gels that I plan to use and I plan to show you guys on my channel. But I will not be doing wash and goes, at least not as often as I used to. Now that brings us into styling with foams because they said that if you don't want to do wash and goes, you can style your hair with a foam, a styling foam. Have I tried that? I don't think I've... I did try that. I tried it one time. <laughs> My hair did not last as long as Red House Fire, let me tell you. So... I put it in, I style my hair with the mousse. Of course, mousse allows your hair to be detangled really nicely. It feels really good going on, but there is little to no hold for me, again, in this Car Caribbean humidity. So it's a no again for me, sis. So I will continue on with my leave-in and whether it's a twisting cream or whether it's a gel on top. And these days, I think I told you guys on Instagram that I have found that doing my hair in braids is better than doing it in twists. So that is what works for me. That is what I've found lately that works for me. You could still d dibble and dabble in different styles and find what works for you, but just telling you guys what works for me. Now, after that, they employ you to sit on the hooded dryer to let your style set. Now, I will say that when I did attempt that, and that was in the video, ironically, where I said that wash and goes were destroying my hair. That was the result from that particular wash day. I didn't film it because I was still kind of trying to test it out a little bit, but those were the results. That wash and go lasted me an entire week, so I can vouch for the fact that styling or drying your hair under a hooded dryer helps to set your curls in place and it lasts way longer without retouching. So yeah, I would advise that if you are interested in attempting this particular routine that you do, whether you invest in a hooded dryer or you get one of those soft bonnet hooded dryers, if you are local, I've seen that Hub for Natural Hair is selling them. Um, I have also seen, um, you could also probably use like a blow dryer and or diffuser and use that to help you dry your hair. Air drying doesn't give you the same results as setting your hair with heat in a wash and go. I could tell you that hands down for sure. So yeah, those are like the one, two, three, three steps or four if you count drying. Those are the four steps that you would take in doing your wash day. Now, and then you rinse and repeat moving forward. Now, as I said, I kind of broke down all of these steps and give you guys my thoughts along the way. Now, as a whole, like I said, it's not something that I would do just because I don't use oils and butters like that, but I do see the merit in it. And I see that there are some things that we can take and some things that we could kind of leave on the wayside, especially if it doesn't work for you. Yeah, I would say give it a shot. You never know, it might work for you. I never thought I would be a person who would be doing mini braids to try to grow up my hair, but it has been working. <laughs> so you never know what works for you. Try it out, test it out, give it a shot. See if it helps you. See if it helps you to retain moisture as much as they say it would. Personally, without a leave-in conditioner, I don't see that being possible for my life, but they are the professionals. Now, if you are for or against this particular detox, then do you boo-boo? I'm not here to convince anyone one way or the other. I just wanted to share some scientific facts about the process, about the approach, about hair, and give you some insight into why it might work, why it may not work for you. And give you some tips and tricks or some background as to what my experience was with it and what I recommend for you if you decided to go either way. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video. I hope it was informative and engaging. <laughs> if you guys like this type of content, then definitely hit the thumbs up button. If you've gotten to this point in the video and you are not yet subscribed, sis or sir, I'm going to need you to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss future uploads. It means so much to me and it helps my channel grow. And I will see you all in the very next video. Take care, guys. Bye.